Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Deb and this is DB Designs and Sewing Australia. Welcome to my Friday Sews. Please like and subscribe, which is what I'm supposed to be saying at the beginning, not at the end, apparently. And I'm here to show you my makes for the week. I have not made a huge amount of things this week. I have managed to make the... Penelope woven dress by Style Arc that I was making in the red, oh gosh, it looks orange on camera, the red um, linen suiting, exactly the same dress as Deb from Sewing Seams with Deb made. I'll insert some photos. Pretty happy with this, and I um, was going to do a 12. In the end, I pinned the pattern to my mannequin and it fitted, so I made it up. The only thing I could say, it's probably a bit long in the waist for me. And so I have tried it on with several several different belts. So first of all, let's go through the dress. It's got these beautiful sleeves. These are really beautiful sleeves. Now, I don't think I'd make this dress up in a rayon because in a rayon, you're not going to get the same effect that the sleeves give you in a stiffer type of fabric like what this linen is because this is a linen suiting, so it's a much heavier fabric. I'm really happy with the fabric. It's beautiful, but it does fray a lot. I can see it is all over my sewing room everywhere. Um, so the issue I've got is it it's a bit long in the waist. It's okay when you first put it on, but I can see if I was wearing it, I'd be constantly, every time I stood up, pulling it down because it tends to crease right in the waist there and then that bit stays up. So in hindsight, I should have shortened the waist. Who would have guessed for someone that's so short in the waist? So I'm only five foot four and in fact, one of the ladies that I met up with at um, Frock Tales said, I thought you were really tall. I thought, no, I'm short. I'm five foot four, so that's short. And my legs are the same length as someone who's probably five foot six, like one of my daughters is. Our legs are the same length, but my body is considerably shorter than hers. So that's where I'm losing most of it from. And what that does is it makes your boobs look like they're down at your waist. So in hindsight, I should have shortened the waist on this, but what I have decided to do is wear a belt with it. Now, I'll insert photos so you can see, I'll just move over so I can insert the photos there, so that you can see the options of belts. Now I've got this wide, there's three leather belts. I've got this wide leather belt. It's actually a really, really nice belt. But once again, it does that thing, because it's a wide belt, not all that great for people that are short-waisted. And the other thing I've got is a red belt, which actually matches pretty well with the dress. And the other belt option I have is this narrower black belt, which I think is my preferred look. Let me know what you think and which belt I should be wearing it with. Um, the only adjustment I made to the pattern was that I took this neck in. It's all stitched down now. Um, I took the neck in probably in a one centimetre V. It's actually easy to take in and shape because it's got seams all over it. And last night when I got home from work, the zip that I ordered had arrived because I really wanted to use a YKK zip in it. And as you can see, the zip is perfect in it. Really good quality zip. Need to show you the quality of the zip. So this is, so it's on a cotton. So if I was to go to Spotlight and many other places, the birch zips are on a nylon and I find that you cannot sew ultra close to 
the zip teeth in the nylon version. It makes it really hard to zip the zipper. But with the YKK zip and being cotton, I don't even press the teeth back towards the center. Like it's recommended that you do for an invisible zip is to open it up and with your iron press in so that you're exposing the part that you're supposed to sew in. But with a YKK zip, I find it really easy to find the place that you're supposed to be sewing in. And as you can see, it looks really, really good and closes up really, really well, just like it was a seam. So really happy with the zip. And I actually got that this zip, which you can see is a fabulous match um, from the sewing gem because not it can be a bit hard to get. Now, I usually buy my YKK zips from M. Reich. They're in Collingwood or Abbotsford, probably Collingwood. And, um, but they don't always have a lot of colors. They always have black and white and they have all the denim ones and they have the denim ones that you can dye the color, which I really love the zips that you can dye. But, um, of course, you wouldn't be dyeing the nylon zip because it's not going to dye the teeth. So put a little label in it because I did start this, must have cut, because I traced the pattern off. I didn't cut straight into the pattern. I traced the pattern off on Sunday night and then just did a bit every night and finished it last night when I got home from work and my zip was here. So really happy with the dress, but feel that I need to wear a belt with it. I think the belt I'll wear with it will be the black belt. And in the photos, I am wearing it with black shoes. So sort of just like um, some summer enclosed toe sandals, I guess you'd call them. You know, the rope style wedge sandals, which are comfortable shoes. So um, that's going to be one of my Christmas dresses. Very, very happy with it. Can't say that it's the perfect fit around there, but I think it's just me. It seems to be everything I've got does the same thing, which is I seem to be a bit hollow here now. And I think that's just old age. So um, that's just everything dragging down with gravity, I think. So really happy with this dress. I think it looks better on Deb from Sewing Seams with Deb than it does on me because her hair's darker than mine. And so I think this is the right red for me. This is actually a blue based red, as is the belt, as is my lipstick. And you'll notice I've actually got red lipstick on and I usually always wear pink and hot pink things. But this is a blue based red, so it's the right red for me. Um, and I will wear it as one of my Christmas dresses, but as it is linen suiting, it gets very creased up. And as my mother would say, it looks like you've been under the bed. And I, so, and I know that that's the properties of linen and it's supposed to look like that, but I find it very difficult to deal with the fact that it looks like it's not ironed. So that's just me and... Um, I'll have to learn to deal with that. But really, really happy with the dress. Came together quite easily. As with most style art patterns, uh, the instructions are quite scant, to say the least. But you do have a, um, a little um, Q code on it so that you can look up the make on it and when I checked on their site, you actually don't need the QR code. You can just look up. It's one of their tutorials on their site. But even then, doesn't tell you anything. Doesn't tell you everything that you need to know at the times I wanted to look it up. When I looked it up, I thought, this makes me none the wiser. I'm just gonna have to make it up as I go along. I can see which pieces fit into which, and it was where the underarm met and it was really just about how that would work but it really works because 
it's a gusset under your arm. So it worked out in the end. And there's another piece that is essentially this piece, which is a bit of fluff, which is the gusset on the top of the sleeve. So this creates part of the neckline here and it comes down and then creates some of the pleats in the sleeve. Now I just, I actually stitched this band on and then I just overlocked it off. My overlocker was not happy at all with um, when it came to the part with the seams because it has got interfacing in it as well. It's a heavy fabric and my overlocker has not been the same since I enabled it to smash to the ground. So I can see early next year, I will be buying a new overlocker and I think I might buy a baby look. See what they're like. I was talking to one of the ladies at Frock Tales and she said, once you've used a baby lock overlocker, you're never gonna want any other sort because I thought, will I get a, a dukey one or will I get a baby lock? Which one will I get? I know there's not a huge amount of baby lock in Australia, but there is a place that's not too far from me. That's just like down near the Yarra Valley, like down near wineries. Go there. And she and this lady said that um, the baby lock one's fantastic and how she had sewn a tissue and then had sewn like a huge amount of layers of denim or fleece or something like that that's quite heavy and it just goes from one to the other and is self-adjusting really easily, which I'm sure the Juki one probably is too. But the only problem I've got is I'd really like to use Bayswater Sewing Centre and they don't sell Baby Lock. So I find the service from there very, very good. They're very, very knowledgeable. And I think in, in Australia, sewing machine mechanics, which are overlocker mechanics and all that type of thing, are getting few and far between. I don't think it's a trade that people go into that much, but honestly, I'm sure you'd have plenty of work because when I called Bayswater Sewing Centre about um, servicing or fixing my overlocker that crashed to the ground and was jammed inside the cabinet, um, it was three months before they could look at it. And I thought, there's no way I cannot have this overlocker for three months. And it was only a few months old when I did that to it because I think I only bought it in February this year. So it still has its issues. It sews some fabrics really well. It sews stretch fabric actually quite well. It's not liking anything that's heavy and woven. So might be time to think about buying a new one. But anyway, I managed to get it all overlocked. The whole thing's overlocked. Now you will note in the photos that I'm inserting that it's quite long. I'm not sure if I should shorten it or not. So all I really did was I just overlocked it and turned it up and machine hemmed it. Because the thread I've got is such a good match, don't try and unpick anything, um, is such a good match to the fabric, um, it, it, you really can't tell that it's machine hemmed on the bottom and it's honestly down that far. I'm just not sure if I should shorten it or not or maybe if I'm going to wear a belt with it, I shouldn't shorten it because it, you know, wearing a belt actually makes the garment shorter. But that's how I went with the Penelope dress. Highly recommend it. If you shorten the waist, you probably need to shorten the waist a bit. And so I should know that from all the other things, uh, Pattern Emporium's the same, so stop, why wouldn't Style Arc be the same? Um, and when I look back at my Style Arc patterns, when I made the, what's it called? Armadale dress, I shortened the waist of it. So I don't think I made a twirl. I must have pinned that pattern on my mannequin too. 
but really what I was looking for when I was pinning this on the mannequin was is it going to be wide enough in the waist for me I made a size 14 so I made a straight size 14 took a tuck in the center front here going down probably three inches back into the seam original seam line and I have adjusted my pattern I just adjusted the pattern and I wrote on the pattern that this is the adjusted pattern for me. So other than that, but I'm sure I will. I haven't taken a tuck in that those pattern pieces yet, but I have written on my, so I write everything in a book. Um, I have written in there that I will need to, probably two centimetres would do it. It's just going to lift it up just that tiny bit so that when you sit down doesn't get that crease around it and I also thought something like you know what I could just run a seam around that center and it would just look like a dress with a seam in it forgetting that it had an invisible zip in it which went in so well I don't particularly want to take that out and I probably could have gotten the dress on without a zip to be honest um, if you pulled it down hard enough over your bust where the waist and the bust is so but there's something really nice about being able to step into a dress it's actually a really long zip yeah so the zip is this long and you can step into the dress and I can zip it up by myself if the if the tape of the zip was the birch one which is nylon I would not be able to get it zipped up myself because I like my invisible zips to be invisible and so it needs to look just like a seam and to me that's what that looks like um, can't go past a YKK invisible zip really really good zips just wish they were available in more colors I think the colors are available in other countries just not necessarily Australia and even when I've looked up on Etsy lots of them I thought oh yeah I'll buy some of those a few of each color and then when you get to the end of it it says does not ship to Australia so um, I'm sure lots of people in Australia will find that with Etsy things um, is that it lots of it does not ship to Australia which is a shame yeah so really really happy with this dress think it'll be a great Christmas dress if I can just get over the fact that it's um going to look a bit wrinkled because that's the properties of pure linen so that's my Penelope dress now the other thing I got finished because I showed it to you last week but I didn't have the buttons on it is the all-in easy fit shirt and these are the buttons I chose and pigeon wishes buttons so really love the pigeon wishes buttons I think they're really really good and I think they're good value for money so this is the all-in easy fit shirt by Patton Emporium not sure if I showed you last week that I just made some bias tape for it just wearing it today with the collar turned up a bit and a bit of weird jewelry I found in my room so so that's just magnetic um, something I bought on a whim once and I thought mm, I've got red lipstick on maybe I'll put some red accessories with this and I actually look through my scarves and I do not have a red scarf because I don't actually wear red very often. Something I should wear. I actually, I do wear red polo neck jumpers because I have got one of those Trudy turtlenecks in the red merino wool. But I usually probably wear it under a black top or a black coat or something like that. So that's all I've got for today. I need to go and start making all the dough for the gingerbread houses. So next weekend, my grandchildren, well, three of them, are coming to make gingerbread houses. The other two are a bit little yet. Um, 
And so we will be making gingerbread houses. And what I do is I make the dough, I cook all the pieces. So it's got two ends, one with a little doorway in it and a door, two sides, two roof pieces. We don't do the chimney because they just knock them off. So, because they just get knocked off really easily. So, and I think I need to make enough for 10 gingerbread houses. And then I also make a whole lot of um, gingerbread cookies as well for them to decorate so that, so they've got something to have on the day. Because if we're making it on the second, um, they'll be taking their gingerbread houses home so that they can have them um, on Christmas Day or have them as a centerpiece table decoration for Christmas Day. So I will be madly making all of the gingerbread pieces and then putting them together. I actually put them on the, I actually assemble them and the kids just decorate them because when you assemble them, often you've got things holding them up I've got you know a glass on either side holding the wall straight and all of that while that icing dries and so that's just way too fiddly for kids and it would take too long they already need to be assembled and ready for them to decorate and Madden will have worked out who's doing what and if people are doing roofs or walls or just cookies or whatever they're doing um Somehow at times I think they're just in it for the lollies because of course I've got, I've got so many bowls of lollies for them to stick onto the gingerbread houses. But they love doing it. And I must say Adele, every time I see her, she goes, when are we making the gingerbread houses, Nanny? So she's really looking forward to it and so are the other two. So i tell you what else I have been doing this week. I've been painting some furniture. So my husband has been very busy building these, I'm sure if they're called educational towers or they're really just towers that kids stand on at the bench. So two of them are staying here and the white one's going home to Mia's house so that she can stand at the bench and help her mother with the cooking. So they're really just really lovely little towers for kids to stand in so they can reach the bench because other than that, they're kneeling on a kitchen chair when they do um, the gingerbread houses, but we'll see how they go this year. And the middle one will be for Mia when she's here. So that's all I've got for you today. Please like and subscribe. Everyone have a wonderful sewing week. Don't know what the weather's doing here. It's quite warm today, but then I just got notification of thunderstorms and weather warnings of what's to come. So we'll see what happens with that. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.